Okay, this video is going to be completely different from the rest of my videos. Usually I try to inspire people, I usually talk about spirituality, I usually talk about improving humanity as in, in general, but this video is going to be very, very different. Because I want to talk about my childhood. My childhood was actually Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and I was just turning 12 when Grand Theft Auto 4 turn, uh, came out. And I started, I was playing Grand Theft Auto since I was like 6, 7. Okay, I know Grand Theft Auto by heart, and I know this this is this is disinteresting compared to me think considering and creating ideas for humanity. But I'm right now I just repurchased uh, Grand Theft Auto Five for the PS4, and I'm right here and I'm in the middle of the third mission. You know, right after you, the race with you and the other character and all that, when you're about to go to the first uh, when you first get the gun. The first time you get a gun in Grand Theft Auto 5. That's where I'm at in the story right now. And I see so many problems artistically. And this is what I want to talk about. Is the artistic problems Grand Theft Auto basically have been having since Grand Theft Auto 4. Okay. And why. I want to get into why the developers of this game. Of the Grand Theft Auto series along with Red Dead Redemption. Manhunt. Max Payne. And a couple others I believe that I've played through. Because actually, Rockstar is one of my favorite gaming companies. Because they know, I go through when I want to play an open world, I go to Bethesda. When I want an actual artistic RPG, I go to Bioware. If I want to play a, a mature game with maturity screaming at it at me, I want to. I go to Rockstar Steady. I go to Rockstar North. I go to Rockstar Games. Um, those are my three favorite companies, along with a couple others, but they're not really worth talking about. What I want to say is that Grand Theft Auto has been having a problem since 2008. Because um, technically, you know, GTA 4 had two expansions like GTA 3 had two expansions. Um, the main problem with Grand Theft Auto starts with Grand Theft Auto 4. Now let's go back to San Andreas. And Vice City. Vice City had this dark, dark edge to it. And it was an artistic contrast to the vibrant city and open world itself. And the, vi and the feels and the vibes of the radio stations. And the overall feel of everything in the game. The, the, di the narrative content was extraordinary. Extremely dark. Compared to the vibrant, colorful, everything else. And it was a perfect contrast. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas decided to go even darker. Um, get rid of the vibrant, colorful contrast. Everything was a stable, mature feel and vibe to it. But, and, let's, and then GTA 4 came out where they just wanted to get it as mature as possible. And GTA 4 really is the most mature game in the series. Um... And that's another problem that the future of the series had after 4, um, was that it was just extremely mature, okay? And people complained, but Rockstar North had no idea what people about complaining about, about GTA 4 were complaining about, okay? We were not complaining about the boringness of the story. We were complaining about the boringness of the open world. In fact, I re I saved right before the final decision. I saved the game and I played through both endings to my heart's content because I thought that was the most mature way to end a mature story. In fact, the the deal ending was one of the first times that this type of game that wasn't a sci-fi, wasn't a fantasy, wasn't was a real story in real life that made me cry. Because the deal ending made me cry. Because that was the perfect ending. An ending that was just like, oh, we did it. We did it. We did it. And then a hitman goes to the funeral and kills and destroys the happiness that was a, taking place. That was the most brilliant execution the ending could have had. The most brilliant idea there. Then, and, and then the gameplay that was not the main campaign was just so tedious. Um, there was, just, just go play bowling, there was no fun side activities, the, the radios mission, the radios, um, the music choices, artistically, the city design was all boring and bland. 
t just so tedious almost, and that's what we were complaining about. And I'm starting to, I'm seeing extreme flaws in Grand Theft Auto V because they thought, oh, we were complaining about the story is maturity. We were complaining about the story of the campaign because we were not. None of the fan base was complaining because Grand Theft Auto IV was just as dark as San Andreas. And we did not complain about this campaign of San Andreas. In fact, it was applauded. We Across the world, every fucking per fan of, of the series was applauding the mature content of, of the story of San Andreas. Everything. We were applauding that more than the fun that the rest of the game gave us. We were too busy applauding how well written, how mature, how dark, how human the story was. It was just human. It was just this human experience of just how terrible life is. And how people can betray you and how all that. Just like GTA 4. Except GTA 4 did it slightly better. Um... But then we go to GTA 5, and the artistic vision of the game is apparent as soon as the game starts. Because of the complaints of GTA 4, they decided to remove all mature content, destroy that humanity, destroy that theme of the franchise, and decided to replace it with the most bold idea ever. Just make every mission a sin of... A just make the setup and structure of each mission and the entire story of GTA V as the, the structure and idea behind all of it is just cinematic interest instead of this, this sense of humanity that every GTA has had. Every GTA. Not just GTA 4, all the way back to probably GTA 3. Because GTA 1 and 2 were arcade games, so it's hard to count them. Um, even, even the terrible Vice City stories... And all that, even that had a sense of humanity compared to fight, uh, compared to GTA V. And I'm gonna complain about two things about this, and they both kind of co-align. The first part is so bad I had to make it, make it its own thing. I was just gonna make that. Oh, the overall product is bad. It's like no, this specific thing is so bad it needs to be separated. But the two are interlinked. And they both shared the, all of the same problems. But the, oh, but the, there was one part of this game that is fundamental in every game. Every story, every book, everything that can tell a story is the opening of the game. The opening was so terrible in GTA V. In fact, every Grand Theft Auto had slow build-up. And that was always my favorite part of the series. That made me like Grand Theft Auto more than other games like, you know, Baldur's Gate. Um, even though Baldur's Gate had good build-up, um, Morrowind had good build-up. But GTA had a profound understanding what a build-up under... What a build-up to the story means. Far more than Baldur's Gate. Far more than Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. Far more than a lot of games. And for them to just toss that out the window is just terrible. Because in Grand Theft Auto, every Grand Theft Auto, we spend, before anything cool happens, the first awesome set piece happens, we have about 15 to 20 minutes. 20 missions. Missions. Not just minutes, but missions. Detailing and going into extreme detail about the situation the characters are in, who what the characters are like, how these characters are set up, what these characters represent to the story, and just extreme, extreme layers, layering of build-up. In Grand Theft Auto V, it feels like they cut out the first 20 missions of the game and went to the very first set piece of the game. That, you know, the twist. Because in, in Grand Theft Auto IV, it was the twist. In Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, it was the twist of Big Smoke betraying you. In Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, it was your, ho your house getting burned down. Imagine if Grand Theft Auto IV started with you realizing your house was burned down and you had to go into hiding. Imagine if that was the first mission. That would suck. That would really suck compared to the rest of the story. Or if, you know, you're introduced to this awesome character named Big Smoke and you just really like him. And then he betrays you at the end of the first, end of the first mission. Imagine how 
bad that would be to the overall artistic vision of the game. It feels like there were 20 missions to 30, even fucking 30, missions taken out of Grand Theft Auto V in the snowy part of the game. Okay, where we get to understand these characters and their dynamics with each other. And it feels like there was a huge portion of this character that was killed off in 15 minutes into the game. There should have been, it felt like there was going to be build up to specifically Brad. Okay, I could care less because the rest of the game after the first mission had really good setup and really good dynamic between Trevor and Michael. But it was Brad that felt like it was lacking something there. I mean, like, imagine if Brad, if they wrote, if Rockstar North developed, wrote Bradley to be more likable and more friendly to the player than Michael or Trevor, and he died 20 missions into the game, five hours into the game, 20, two, 10 hours into the game. Imagine how heartbroken we would be. Imagine how memorable that would be. Kind of like Big Smoke being arrested in San Andreas. Kind of like how... Honestly, Roman died in the deal ending. It would be monumental to the story if it was played out where he had 30 missions, 20 to 30, even 15 missions, building up to Bradley's death. Okay? That would feel monumental. Just like San Andreas in 4 were. Even, you know, in a way, Vice City in 3 were. And the how this links is that I had no idea what the opening was about. It was just people robbing banks, robbing a bank. I had no idea Bradley was shot. I had no idea Michael was pretending to be shot. Um, I had no idea what the hell was going on with that sniper that shot Bradley. I had no idea and should have had buildup. It should have had this suggestive buildup like, oh, well, in the first 20 missions, they're, they're, they're friends. Bradley and Michael and Trevor are friends. But Michael keeps disappearing and talking to these FIP agents. What the hell's going on? That would have actually been really good setup to the story. Not just having it a big, flashy opening. That was the first problem with Grand Theft Auto V. The second problem was the rest of the game was so flashy... That kind of flashy that we saw in the opening, where we had no idea what was going on half the time. We had no idea. We had no idea that Patrick Petrowski... Uh, no, not his. I'm so fucking sorry. I was thinking of another Patrick, sorry. Um, I, was, I had no idea the Patrick McCready guy would even be in the game. I thought, like, if you're going to bring characters back, Rockstar, and you're going to have this big connection, make them worth a damn. No, make them worth a damn. Same with the, uh, well, who's that guy in Grand Theft Auto 4, the, the Secret Services guy that um, Nico's first girlfriend introduces Nico to? Make him worth a damn, damn it. Make him have an entire story. If you're going to put that character at all, if you're going to put Nico's girlfriend in it at all, make it more than one damn scene. Because every connection to Grand Theft Auto 4 in 5 was so damn cheap. I wouldn't call it cheap if I wasn't so impressed with the connections of San Andreas and Grand Theft Auto 3 in the past, along with Liberty City Stories connecting the four. How brilliant it was in direction, in storytelling. Just have these connections between games before Grand Theft Auto 5 was really well done. In this game, it felt like the most bullshit excuse to make money. It's like, well, it has to have some connection to Grand Theft Auto 4. Right? I thought it was stupid. I thought it was stupid, really. Just put nothing in the game. Don't put Patrick and McCready in the game. Do not put that Secret Service guy into the game. Don't put Nico's girlfriend into the game. If they're going to be so insignificant to the damn plot, don't fucking do it. You know, and the missions, it felt like two things. It felt like during the main plot storyline of Grand Theft Auto V, it feels like multiple missions were put together to shorten the game as short as, as short as possible. Not only that, but it really was screaming the idea that twenty there was a twenty mission build up during the uh, snowy part of the game. It would actually be a small small section of the snowy part of North Yankton, I believe, to be explorable temporarily for about ten to twenty missions, because the final mission count in Grand Theft Auto V is sixty nine missions. It, they they cut they cut a lot out. 
Because the fundamental structure of Grand Theft Auto Ben has always been at least 90 to 100 missions. That was the fundamental structure. At least 80 to 100 missions. There, there was something cut. What was cut from Grand Theft Auto V? What section was cut? It had to be in a longer opening to... To, to what I was basically suggesting, like having this build up to this Bradley character before, you know, he died. And, you know, and if he had build up to his character and if he was more likable than in character and personality than Trevor or Michael, then his death would mean something. Instead, it just feels like this. The artistic problems are everywhere. And I didn't I noticed the first mission had problems. But then I went into the second mission. I thought only the. Only the opening had problems, right? I, I felt the same way in the second mission, during the, the race, in the second mission of Grand Theft Auto V. And so far in the third mission, where, you, where it's introducing you to the your first pistol, it just really feels like everything is too flashy, the narrative is spinning too quickly. The main problem that I am getting so far, after replaying this game a third time, is that the... After the nostalgia and the fanboyism has died down after a few years, it just feels like the game was bad. The game, everything, the story, the character dynamics, the, the setup of the city, the setup of the story, the setup of everything in the campaign happens way too quickly for digest for you to digest what's going, the hell is going on. And it just does something else. It's right before you get di actually finally digest something, it does something else. And you have to digest that. And then before you digest that, something else happens. That's what uh, the entirety of Grand Theft Auto V felt the first time I played through it. It's just way, way, way more noticeable once the nostalgia goes away. I just, I'm just bizarrely disappointed in Grand Theft Auto V. When we complained about Grand Theft Auto IV, we did not complain about the story. I don't remember anybody complaining about the campaign. How mature it was. And it just feels like there's no fantastic story. There's no humanity in the story. There's no dark... It was the best part. It was about humanity. The humbleness of humanity and all that. But it was always about the dark side of humanity. And I think in real life, outside of video games, exploiting that and, and showing how that off, the darker side of humanity in the way San Andreas and Ford did really shows us in real life how dark humanity can get and this is mi and that's missing in this game the entire theme of grand theft auto is fucking gone just to re replace it with fun mission after fun mission after fun mission you know trying to outbeat how fun all the missions were in san andreas when that was unnecessary honestly that was really unnecessary um because not every mission and even in san andreas were, was that good we only wrote, like there's only like ten or fifteen missions in San Andreas that are that they modeled this game after, and San Andreas had over like I think over like either a hundred and three or more, hundred and three missions or more. And there were only fifteen of those missions that Rockstar and the fan base modeled this game after. You know, and the rest of the missions was story building. Okay, sure, I get it when there's a fun mission, but goddamn, I want some story building, motherfucker. Please, fucking do it. I know about, okay, I know, I, I actually write for a living. I have written many novels I've scrapped because I never liked the product. I know how story building goes. Just gonna have to thought of five through all of that out the window. I know people don't really, and it's really weird because nowadays people are, there's nothing, nobody in the fan base that's like me or like the old fan base back in 2004. Because I remember back in 2004, people were skeptics about the story. And the more they were skeptic about the story, they, the more they liked it. Now it's just like nobody cares about the story. I wonder why that is. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. I miss the old, I miss the old uh, Grand Theft Auto games. Um, that wasn't about the huge impressive map or the huge impressive multiplayer or the huge imp impressive fucking missions that had fun, fun, fun. It was all about story building. It was all about showing that dark side of humanity. I don't know where the hell that go where the hell did all that go? I'm really I'm the th I'm three missions in the thought of three. 
on my third playthrough of the game franchise of the of the game, and I'm seeing the flaws more and more and more. I replay Grand Theft Auto V. So this is my message to you, Rockstar, and I hope you take message because I know how story building works. I know, and I've actually studied it, and I've wrote stories for myself. I know how story building works. I know how franchises work, actually, because I've actually written sequels to my uh, to my stories all scrapped. Uh, so I know how character building works, how themes work, and you're supposed to find suggestive ways and manners to sink and root in that theme in unexpected ways. I know everything, Rockstar. I know almost everything about story building. Your game, Grand Theft Auto V, is disappointing as hell. Because you... You saw the complaints about Grand Theft Auto IV and took it the wrong way. We wanted a better... We wanted a better open world, more fun open world. Not a more fun story. You got that so wrong.